Yes, the real Lil Meech. Boss of all bosses. And shout out King Japster. But speaking about that, bro. <laughs> so, speaking about that. Because, you know, recently I've become a supervisor at Home Depot. Right. Congratulations on that, too, my right. boy. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Man, I so, saw me and my manager that was on duty, right? Um, I'm excited to get off work. You know, right. have a little plan, you know, get where the boys go out for the night. Right. Then somebody, for some reason, broke the gate to, to the garden. And by law, all by, you know, Home Depot, whenever one of the perimeter is broken, the manager and the supervisor on duty for that night had to stay overnight. Until like until the next manager come in and relieve them, and the next manager doesn't come in until six. But I was at work from two, from two p.m. to like five fifty something a.m. in the morning. Damn, damn. But I said I was like, God, at least sometimes I realize why some people don't want to move up because of the pressure and everything. Some of the things they come with, but. At the end of the day, if you stay where you are, you can't grow. Right. Because yeah. to me, it's all about leadership. Not everyone is suitable to be in a leadership role, you know. And at the end of the day, you just make the decisions that's best going to support your lifestyle, you know. So some people are more than capable to be a manager or an overseer of whatever entity it is. But they just chose not to because of the stipulations that it may come with. And other people do it. They don't care about the stipulations. They know what they know where they're trying to go and they're gonna to try to fulfill that. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just a matter of what is best suitable for you and your lifestyle. That's yeah, how I've always yeah. look at situations like that. Yeah. That's I feel like that's one of those things. You don't realize it until you you know, in that position, though, like, you start off as, like, a regular employee. You don't have much responsibility. And then you kind of just watching from behind. You're like, oh, you know, their job not that bad. I can do this. I can do that. So you in it yourself. And then you just like, yo, this ain't it, you know? Because. <laughs> hey, he make a good point, though, because, um, because I was a regular. I was. You know, especially me at Home Depot go way back since college, since college day, like 2016, when I started at Home Depot. And it's funny because people ask me now, because I know so much, people ask me, like, how can you never be in a manager? Or, but people, people just assume that and they never, you know, thought about me or try to make me one based on how long I've been there. But nobody never asked me that you really wanted to. Because you know, in reality, it got to be the person. Home Depot is a company like, if you want to move up, you got to go talk to the people and say, hey, I want to move up. I want this position. How can I do it? And then that way you go from there. But I never really wanted to move up because I used to see so much stuff. But then at the same time, I used to do stuff that people who are at a higher level was already doing. So I'm like, well, why not? Why not do it since I'm already doing it now? And then I got into the position. I'm like, oh, God damn. That I made a mistake or something, but at the end of the day, if you come down to what you said, leaders, there are some people who are leaders. So, you know, if you're a leader and you know where you're heading to, you got to suck it up, and there are some things that come with it. Yeah. Right. Because leaders, to me, leaders are leaders, and you may choose to not step up. Still doesn't mean you're not a leader. It's just that sometimes you have to be calculative and make the moves that are best for you. Because at the end of the day, you know, when it comes down to it, these companies and organizations don't truly care about you or have your best interest at heart. Okay. It's all about what they can get out of you. Okay. So that's why sometimes if, you, if they want you to do a certain task, you ask for raises. I want to raise, I want this, I want this, I want this, which is nothing wrong with that. You know, they are using you, so you should use them at every cost, mm -hmm. at every junction, and every possible way that you can. Oh, yeah. Nah, that's facts. 
Yeah. It's funny how it goes. Like, <clears throat> like when you're at the regular employee level and your supervisor telling you, oh, do this, do that, you're like, bro, why do I got to do this? I don't get paid enough to do that. Mm. But, like, then you hear, oh, the higher position doesn't have to do this specific task that you're doing. You're like, okay, let me move up so I don't have to do that one I have task. To do that. <laughs> then on top of that, you get a possibly even harder task as supervisor. Mm-hmm. You're like, bro, why do I have to do this? And you're getting it from mm-hmm. the manager. And then you hear something the manager don't got to do. You're like, okay, let me move up so I don't got to do this supervisor this, task. This, this Comes one. on even more manager tasks. <laughs> so is it getting better or is it getting worse? Yeah. But you know That's what it. that is, though? So we got to look at it like this way, right? Before COVID, right? Mm. Before COVID, man- managerial level was it was people who did not work in the store. Just they just went to school, get a degree in business, and become a manager. Those are the people we had before COVID because those are the people who tell you say, "Hey, do this, do this, do this," because you know, for those who worked away from being in the store as a manager. They will never tell you, say, do this, do this, do this. They'll always start something with you. Try to show you there's a way higher is done because, you know, they are more handsome compared to uh, uh, compared to somebody who just have a degree and based off that degree, they become a manager. He have no knowledge on hands on hands on. He only have the knowledge in the head, but on the floor is a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, now... Before COVID, you had those people. Now, after COVID, you have, you have more like inexperienced people who are being pushed in the road because not everybody leaving, going to work from home and all that stuff. And so those spaces are available that need to be filled. So now it's like, okay, who do I have here that been here a little bit longer? That I need to know at least half the stuff. Yeah. And then once you find that person, hey, do you want to be up? Do you want to be a supervisor? Do you want to be this? Yes. Okay, bum, bum, put that person up. So now it's like now things are getting harder because now you're pushing more onto them to do because you want to, you know, you want to raise them up quick. But they're not built for it yet, and it's get scared and quit off on something different. That's an excellent point. Yeah, that's right. That's an excellent point. Big facts, bro. Like, they prioritizing, prioritizing. You know, mm-hmm. that degree over experience. Yeah, babe. It's retail, but... Have you guys ever had any um, jobs that I just didn't like? <laughs> FedEx. Yes, bro. <laughs> FedEx? Yeah, I had a job bro. I did not like at But, all. hey, is it FedEx or UPS? They got that super upgrade in pay. It was like UPS. an hour. But the thing with that is, UPS, you got to work in the... F- uh, like the actual like warehouse for at least like six months to a year before you can become a driver. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's still, that's still a good thing though because there are still a lot of people that have been there for years that yeah. still qualify to obtain that pay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but that that's I think like 30 something an hour. Bro. An hour, that's good. And sometimes they work what, 10 hour shifts a day? Yeah. <sighs> Boy. FedEx, that's what was your experience one. like? terrible uh <laughs> i i was working in the warehouse bro that is it's not it it's not it at all like they got you know the trucks and when it's hot it's hot it's so, hot it's hot yeah, yeah when it's hot it's hot <laughs> ain't no yeah. controlling the temperature nah they got these little fans but it's blowing nothing but hot air uh-huh. and you going and the fan is like at the back or front of the truck where the opening is but then you working all the way down inside, so you're not feeling it. So, so that's like a sweatshop, basically, yeah. And then the thing with that, like the pay was good, but they only giving you like three hours a day. Mm. Yeah, so. So really, you're not really you're not really making much. You're not for the work that you do. Yeah, yeah. No. a whole work, yeah, whole no, work a day makes it seven dollars a day. Like. No, no. Yeah. It's seven dollars for what? Like three, four hours. Three hours, bro. <laughs> Maybe three hours, thirty minutes if you get lucky. That's crazy. Nope. It is funny. It was. <laughs> oh, it was one time. Uh, I just I wasn't off yet, but my shift was over. 
I didn't get to clock out yet. Them people not letting you steal no extra minutes, bro. I went into the little office to uh, to get my uh, it was something I forgot. I was trying to get it, and one of the like supervisors dude was like, "Oh, did you clock out?" He was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Nah, not yet." I was like, oh, go do that. We're not giving no time away. I was like. Not even a couple of minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as your shit over, clock out, then go do whatever you got to yeah, do. Yeah, do whatever you do. Bro. Which, which, you know, now that I'm in the... Supervisor position. Supervisor <laughs> position. <laughs> I, yeah. can, I can relate to something. Now you can relate, yeah. Because I've, I've worked with some people that, that like to steal time. You know, and at the end of the day, it's like, I didn't get this position by... Being a super super nice guy, I'm a nice guy to a certain degree, but at the end of the day, they have faith in me <laughs> to be able to somewhat do the right thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like situations like okay, bro, if you clocked out, or if you off the the shift, your time has ended, and you still on the clock and just lally gagging, you know, watching me do work, like bro, go clock out, man. Yeah. So situations like that, which I've worked with some people all like that, to where they're done. You know, I'm working, but they walking around, chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get some extra coin. You know, like they're walking around. It's like, bro, what are you doing? You know, because I don't mind you clocking out then you chilling. I mean, yeah, I don't mind that. At the end of the day, it's like, okay, yeah, you keep it company. Ah, right, you work here. Yeah, it's, yeah, all right, cool. But... Don't be on the clock, then you watching me do work. All right. <laughs> and I'm your supervisor. Nigga, go clock out, man. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, now that you're a manager, have you, you know, have you come across people like that at the job that uh, man, like to steal time? It's a lot. You're always going to find a, every, every job you go to. For mine, in a retail setting, it's a lot more, it's a lot more worse because... You have people who who want to chit chat or somebody who who would like okay. Let's say your shift is over, right? The shift is over. You go in the clock out. Why you have to go use the bathroom before you go clock out? When you're right by the clock, you can just clock out. And not only you go use the bathroom, but that's thirty minutes. Thirty minutes that you can, <laughs> if you want to be on the clock, you could do something. Yeah. Right. Mm. But it's like, and then I. The worst thing you will find is people will come in, clock in, then spend 30 minutes to go to the restroom and get ready before they can come on the floor yep. to work. So that whole 30 minutes, where were you at? That 30 minutes, I was basically looking all around for you. Where did you go? Oh, I just got here. I got to get a new if. Like, you know, all these little excuses is a lot, man. It's a lot you're going to deal with, but... At the end of the day, the only thing you can do, like you said earlier, they have some trust in you to do the right thing. So at the end of the day, you, you can let it go for, you know, a few, one, two, three times. But at some point, you got to tell yourself, when when would I start doing the right thing? Right. And that's when you're going to be like, walk to that person and say, hey, man, this is what I've been going, I've been observing, this is this, this is this. You know, by doing this, you're hurting the team, you're doing this, you know. Some people don't even know what they're doing. They just, you know, doing it because they feel like, okay, 30 minutes I can make half or if I'm getting paid ten dollars an hour. Yeah. Thirty minutes at five free, five dollars I just make. You know, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Life. No, that's real. Man. man, um, that was a good take. That was a good take. Let's take a five minute break. What's up, y'all? Shout out to King Japs for make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to my boy YouTube channel, period.